And let's go to Scott in Columbus, Ohio. Hey, what's up, Scott? Oh, not too much. How you doing today, sir? <laughs> not too much either, man. Y'all doing well? Yeah, all right. You know, this is my lunchtime, so, you know, um, always a work, kind of a working lunch. Well, thanks for uh, hanging out with me during your lunch hour. So what's up, man? How can I help? Oh, well, um, the reason I'm calling is never thought I'd be doing something like this in my life or anything like that, so I'm more nervous about that than talking <laughs> hey, to that makes, your three that, or four listeners. That makes two of us, man. I sure never thought I'd be doing this, so <laughs> we're on the same team. Uh, so, you know, um, my wife and I have been married for about 10 years, okay. a little over 10 years now, and, you know, we knew going in that we were kind of very opposite people. Um, she had a different she had a lot of stuff going, growing up. Um, you know, her dad was alcoholic. She had, you know, verbal abuse. Her mom passed when she was 12 and she, she struggled with that stuff early on in her adult life. And, um, but she kind of got that under control. And then for me, I, you know, I kind of had a pretty good upbringing, um, and didn't have any of that type of stuff, but I kind of wandered around myself in my early twenties, kicked around all that stuff, went into the Navy at age 27, all those 18 year olds thought I was really old. <laughs> and I, you know, uh, so I felt like I've had a couple different lives and as, as, uh, as the book goes on. Very cool. And, you know, in my forties we met, it was my first marriage. Um, it was her third marriage. Uh, we got married and, you know, we, we worked pretty well together and, that type of stuff. But, um, the last few years hasn't been quite the same. And I don't know if it's just, you know, our differences kind of came to a head or we just grew apart a little bit, but, um, just, I'm going, I wrote a few things down. Kind of that's what I do when I get ready for an appointment or something like that. Good for you. Um, you know, we haven't, uh, like I said, we were raised very differently. I'm just going to read down this. Um, we we haven't been intimate in probably five or six years. We kind of stopped holding hands three or four years ago. Um, so by, by, a, by intimate, you haven't had sex in four or five years, five or six years. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, we have we you know we did a little kiss in the morning, um, but we haven't done that in about a year, um, and just sort of settled into it seems more like a partnership, roommates than we are mm-hmm. a married couple, um, and you know. Pardon me, I'm 55, so it's kind of like, okay, well, together we do okay, monetarily wise, we we can do stuff, and you know, some things we do real well together. But uh, the last few years has been kind of a challenge because she's kind of on the opposite uh, political side of it. But it's more than that. If it was just that, I mean, if that was a big big thing, we would never have gotten together in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've always kind of been more in between and, uh, you know, open mind. It, I think that's the best way to go with that type of stuff. But, you know, I hear you talk a lot about people diving into the phones, being on the internet. And that's, to me, that's kind of what she's done. It seems like mm. every, I don't know if you call them conspiracy theories or anything like that. Um, she considers, it seems like everything's a fact. I mean, just a, uh, see if I can read. Um, she spends all, all the evening, she goes into the room probably around seven o'clock and just mm. listens to her phone and stuff like that. You know, she says the president is not really president. The former president's really the president. Now the, the current president's never been to the white house. Um, there's a cabal controlling everything for the last 20 years. Um, silver is going to go up for 4,000%. 4, Continue. I'm taking notes. <laughs> I agree and, with everything. Continue. Okay. All right. <laughs> and she started. She started buying Bitcoin, and with the the silver, um, you know, I don't. I didn't mind it at the beginning because it's not the worst investment. It's not the best investment. And no, it's, it's the worst. Safe. It's the worst. And, it's a terrible and, investment. Terrible. And and uh, you know, hundred hundred ounces, two hundred ounces. Okay. We, we could absorb that in this stuff. And sat, last Saturday, and this is actually after I contacted your show, um, she told me she finally started to dive into Bitcoin. <laughs> like as it's you know, as I'm it's like, as it's collapsing in front of our very eyes. Yeah, yeah. So so then I asked her, and I try to pay attention to a point, but at the same time, 
you know, she's always, she, she's been kind of more of the bill payer and she does make sure we, you know, we have money in the bank and all that type of stuff. We're paying bills. We can go do this and that, that type of stuff. We have no debt, um, no car debt, no house debt or anything like that. Um, so we're doing okay on that. But then I asked her that day, cause she knew I was not that happy about the Bitcoin. I said, so how much have, cause she told me she was going to stop at 500 ounces. And she told me she's got about $30,000 in silver right now. So that's in the last probably six or seven months. $30,000 uh, in silver. Yeah. 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 So, and I just told her, I said, I don't know that we can keep going like this. I said, I, I just don't know that I completely trust her with yeah. when it comes to, to money. Absolutely. So, hey, so like, bring me to a head. How can I, I help? It sounds like there's a lot here. Well, I'm trying to figure out, you know, now, well, I guess one thing I want to say is uh, all that aside, say that you took that out, um, all that stuff out. Part of me, it maybe is ready to move on anyway, because again, you know, I was telling you, we haven't had sex yeah. in, in five or six years. So that happened before all that. So why, why let me back up. Why, why'd y'all stop having sex? I don't know. <laughs> we, we've never talked about it. So why, I, why you know, for five years have you never brought up to your wife? Hey, we haven't had sex in 1500 days. I, you know, I can't, can't answer that. And, um, okay. it's, and I'm and I'm kind of a guy with at work and stuff that I'm always still I can usually find a solution to things and it's hard for me or maybe it's right in my face and I'm just ignoring it and so I thought I'd okay. reach out and and sure. I am going to do a little bit more than this I've already got that started set up awesome through so, through our EAP program here, oh um, that's but, awesome good I'm glad you're reaching out to somebody all right so let me let me jump in here first okay. is I hear a somewhat of a resignation. I'm 55. We're making good money. I'm tired. We're, there you go. You're tired. And your body is checked out. Another yeah. word for that over time is depression. You, your body just said, I, I'm, I'm out. And something has begun to stoke the fire a little bit. Your body's beginning to feel not safe because your money is going out the door now. And so I want you to hear me very, very carefully. You deserve a rambunctious, chaotic, hilarious, intimate sex life at the age of 55. Okay? Yeah. Not, I don't really know. We haven't had sex in five or six years, and I just never even, never even asked. Never even talked about it. I just like to find solutions on my own. When I can't find them, I just kind of just move on. Brother, you're worth more than that. She's worth more than that. Right. And, you know, she said it, we've had, you know, a few discussions with everything. And she's told me that, you know, maybe she needs to go find like-minded people. And, uh, you know, I want to say back, like, maybe you should, you know. Yeah. It's just, so, so. And maybe that's, maybe that is the right, right answer there. Maybe, but me and my wife are radically different on different things. And I've got friends in my life that laughingly and lovingly and mockingly call me their hilarious liberal friend. And I've got friends in my life who are like, oh God, here comes Deloney, super conservative guy. Because I've got different thoughts on different topics. And we've just bifurcated the world in some stupid this one or that one. My wife does yeah. too. And we don't match on a lot. And so there's a few topics in our house we have agreed to not talk about. There are some topics that um, not be just because we, I, I know if I go down this road, we're just, I'm just doing it to start a fight and what a dumb way to live. And I know what her thoughts are on it. And so I love her. She's my wife. We're raising a family mm -hmm. together. She's my best friend. Like all these things. I don't have to agree with her on this, especially when she's clearly wrong. Right. <laughs> and she would be telling you the same thing, like, especially when he's clearly wrong, but that doesn't impact our desire to be together. And here's the big difference. We share the same values. We just have different beliefs. And one of our values is we will honor each other. And one of our values is we're going to be really curious. And another one of our values is we're not going to pick fights just to pick fights. Stupid. And so I have people in my life, 
Some that Bernie Sanders would be like, that's eh, a little bit far to the left. You should probably rein it in. And I've got other friends in my life who have slept in my house, um, who've shared my home, that have eaten at my table, whose kids play with my kids, who would make Trump be like, that's ah, a little bit too far to the right. Let's, let's wind it back a little bit, right? I love that right. about my life. And so having different beliefs and different, like, man, what an awesome way to live. So the fact that y'all are in different camps, have different ideas, like she thinks COVID's a hoax and there's some guy in the back of his trunk with a YouTube channel. He's like, for the real truth, right? And f- fine. And that, what is it, Biden's like on a spaceship or something? Whatever, dude, like, that's fantastic. Um, there's a way that that happens in a relationship and it's hilarious. It's funny. And then right. there's a way where that type of going down rabbit holes one way or going down rabbit holes the other way, or a better way to say it is she goes in at seven o'clock during what would normally be her intimate time and her body's screaming for connection. And that's where she finds connection is with, she's created, she's curated and the internet has helped her with its algorithms, curate a group of like-minded people who keep her safe because at home she's got no one and you've done the right. same thing. You're tired. And quite frankly, you sounds like you're lonely. And I've been there too. Okay? okay? All of this starts with two things. Number one, you being really, really honest with yourself about these two questions. What do I want? And what do I need? And when you answer the need questions, this was a game changer in my house. I need physical touch. That's something that settles my body down for a number of reasons. And my wife is not a physical touchy kind of person, but she'll hold my hand. She'll put her barefoot on my barefoot under a table. Not in some pervy, porny way, but in a subtly way, okay? And she will put her arm on my shoulder while I'm scrubbing the dishes and she's grabbing something out of the dishwasher, right? And I am loud as I'll get out in the mornings. I wake up just ready to go go set the world on fire. And she needs quiet in the morning. And so I'm quiet because I love her and respect her. Because I spoke my needs out loud. She spoke her needs out loud. And we've got lists of our needs, right? All I have to say is you need to be clear about what you need. And then the hard part, which you may need to get a counselor, you may need to have a hard conversation with your wife is, honey, here's what I need. And what are your needs? When's the last time y'all went out and just had breakfast together and just said, hey, what are the, let's, what are the state of things? I love you and I miss you. Have you all ever done that? No, not that. We, I mean, we go, we've gone out to breakfast and that type of stuff. But you know, we, our our talks have not been the same the last couple of years as they used to be. Yeah. And uh, here's the thing: we used to be all go, go you, on a trip without without ever t- turning on the radio because we would talk the whole time. Uh, see, we don't do that anymore. Okay, so what you're mentioning, we're roommates, we're just co household managers. Yeah is one of the most common things that's going on in the country right now in marriages. So you're not alone. COVID has destroyed the intimacy. People just got to got busy getting to work and then they didn't have friends. They didn't have their normal routines. They didn't have the trips. Um, it was not as fun having sex because I see you all day, every day, like the intimacy and the, I don't have anything to build up all day. So I just, well, whatever, let's just go to bed. Turned into, let's just watch Netflix, which turned into, let's just watch YouTube, which turned into, oh my gosh, did you know that Biden is a space alien, right? And now we're, we're down a rabbit hole somewhere. And so it really starts with everybody saying, hey, I want to wind this back and I miss you. I miss your body. I miss your touch. I miss our intimate connection. I miss our laughter. I miss our talks. And I feel like um, that you are in fight or flight. You're not safe. That your community found online is keeping you safe. And hear her. I feel like you've just given up on our relationship. I feel like you checked out. I feel like you just go home and watch TV and put your feet up and have dinner. And I'm just going to my bedroom and you don't follow me. Whatever that looks like. And I can see both sides. I can see her saying, we haven't had sex for five years, husband. And you haven't asked me about it once. And I can also see, honey, we haven't had sex for five years because you've been dating your um, cell phone or you've been dating YouTube for the last five years, whatever the thing is. Hear hear me say this. Um, You're worth more than this. She's worth more than this. Your marriage is worth more than this. And I don't think your marriage is over if you don't want it to be, but it's going to take some hard conversations by some grown adults. I'm going to send you all three 
all three questions for humans, okay? Um, what they are, it's for when people have lost connection. It's a deck of cards I made up, man. They're nothing special. Um, actually pretty cool, but it, it's a three decks of cards, and I'm going to send them to you. I'm also going to send you my new book. I want you all to read it together, okay? Own your past, change your future. I'm going to send that to you too because um, both of y'all got some stuff going on, and both of you have gotten off of the path that y'all were supposed to be taking together. And this book will help you get back. But these these three decks of cards, questions for humans, it's just going to help. Man, it's going to be something to reintroduce conversation together. It's going to reintroduce intimacy together. Um, the deck for for couples, the deck for folks who are like you who are married and kind of gotten off, man, Merry Christmas. This deck will help you come back together if you'll allow it to, okay? I want you to use this stuff. And I want you to be ready to have hard conversations. But before you do, what do you need? And what do you want? Scott, you're a brave man. Thanks for calling. I know this is hard, man. I know you're tired, tired, tired. I want you to tell you that you're worth getting back up. Dust your knees off. Dust your shoulders up. Get some people around you. Let's get back into this thing, man. You're worth more than this. 